of U.S. soccer lifts ban on kneeling during the national anthem. The U.S. Soccer Federation has repealed the league's three-year-old ban on kneeling during the national anthem. Uh, this national-wide protest against police brutality and racism and justice sparked by the killing of George Floyd. It has become clear that the policy was wrong and detracted from the important message of Black Lives Matter, even though Megan Rapino didn't give anyone a heads up or Colin Kaepernick. They didn't give us heads up. They just said, they just did it. Um, they didn't really have a conversation. They just were going to do it, uh, which forced the U.S. Uh, national team to uh, change their policy uh, through via U.S. soccer, whatever. Uh, the organization which approved the move in a board of directors vote a day earlier said it would let the players decide how to use their platform to fight for all racism, discrimination, and equity. Under policy 604-1, all national team players were ordered to stand respectfully during the playing of the national anthem at any event in which the federation is represented. The board passed this rule in February 2017. And of course, the fight ensued. Blah, blah, blah. And now we're back to um, people threw a fit. People were murdered. Riots occurred. And people are scared. And this is the best opportunity to make change is during uh, the craziness. So the world's crazy. So the, we're going to get the ones that scream the loudest to make change. All right, so change has happened. So now that you can take a knee, we'll see how many people are going to take a knee. And if you, do the, it's gonna, you know, what's funny? It's gonna be the U.S. is the only country will be taking a knee during their national anthem, even though every country in the world has dealt with racism or is continually dealing with racism. Um, it, there's the human existence is evil. It's bad. Bad things happen. So we, we can't just keep doing this. Finding a reason to throw a fit. Because when you do, people get angry. Our children are watching. And they're going to be angry. And what, when's it going to stop? When's it going to stop? Someone has to stop. You know, I, I'm just, I can't say anything. I have white privilege. So 75% of me has nothing to say. But the 25% of me that doesn't have the privilege has a lot to say. But I'm going to shut it down to 25%. And uh, here you go. I'm, that's it. Okay. So that's all I can say because I don't want to be attacked. I don't want to be destroyed. I don't want to, I don't want Megan Rapino. Imagine Megan Rapino sending me an email or calling me saying, hey, you need to pipe down or else. I'd be scared. She's powerful. You know why? She she has white privilege because she's powerful. I don't know. She is powerful uh, and scary, and she has a lot to say. It, voting means nothing anymore. It's whoever is scarier, and she scares me. Like she could literally end my life. She could. She could get me fired. She could. She could do so many. If she made one phone call to my boss or to our president, I'd be fired. If she didn't like me, I'd be done. You imagine? I'm all like doing my podcast and you know my views keep getting higher and higher and higher. And I'm like, what if I went from micro famous to uh, kind of famous? What if I was getting more hits? I could get canceled because of this white person behind me taking a knee that has white privilege can end my life. Because she can scream the loudest and she can cause problems. And she's 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 worth millions. She's worth millions because of her outrage. She's funded by the outrage. And when you when you fund, when you give people a lot of money and a, a platform for being woke, they uh become very rich and then they come and tell the, the little man like me, I will beat you down if you don't bow down. Isn't that a little bit scary? Vote. There's no voting anymore. There's no vote. It's, it's who, whoever is most angry uh, gets what they want. So 
Um, Megan Rapino and the woke want the U.S. soccer to apologize, and this is their their apology. We apologize to our players, especially our black players, staff, fans, and all who support uh, eradicating racism. Sports are a powerful platform for good, and we have not used our platform effectively as we should have. Is that good enough? So I don't know if it's good enough because Megan and the woke, uh, the cancel culture, they're going to find another reason to throw a fit. So what's their next thing? I mean, and I get it. I know who I am. I fight. I'm argumentative. That's just kind of who I am. I'm recognizing it. I'm arguing mentative to a fault and i've been wrong so many times at least i can recognize i'm wrong a lot so i i have to process my brain works differently than a lot of others i rely on intelligent people to listen to and you know really follow kind of the intelligent side of it i i'm very intelligent of identifying who who actually can make sense and I try to remove emotion much as I can. And growing up, I, I'm very emotional. I'm emotional today, less emotional, but I've been controlled by emotions my entire life, like most of us are. And that's the problem we have. We got a lot of people that aren't grown up and they're controlled by emotions. And it's so easy to manipulate those that have emotions. I don't want to be em- controlled by emotions controlled by emotion so i recognize it at all times i do not want to be controlled by emotion and so many of us are and it's okay if you are get out of it I'm not telling you what to believe politically or anything like that i i'm just trying to figure out this freaking crazy life we're in i've been republican i've been democrat now i'm libe- uh libe- i'm a libertarian um because i don't trust anyone I just, I want to figure things out, but I don't need some Megan Rapino like person to freaking end my life because she's famous and has money and has a platform. I have a small platform, but I can be canceled. And I know this 